Good evening, everyone, and welcome at our new episode of the Thursday Strolls, the cultural webinar that takes you out while you stay at home, created and hosted by ALDA, the European Association for Local Democracy. I'm Irene, I'm the communication officer for ALDA, and with us tonight is a very expert guest. Uh, Benedetta Oddo uh, is a senior strategic advisor to Libyan municipalities, and of course, with her tonight, we're going to talk about Libya. So Benedetta, what is a senior strategic advisor? How did you get there? And what's your experience with Libya? Thank you so very much for, for being with us, by the way. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for inviting me. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good evening uh, to all the audience uh, online. Um, I have to say that uh, um, I don't like very much the word expert. Uh, because we are all in a learning process that never ends. Um, my first uh, uh, um, experience in Libya uh, and my story with Libya wasn't a, a, a love at, at the first sight. Huh? Uh, I, I went to Libya for the first time as UN officer in 2003. Uh, there was still uh, the embargo, and I was expecting a very rich country, wealthy, uh, uh, and I landed uh, uh, in a place that I didn't expect. Uh, poor infrastructure, uh, no organization. Uh, it was. Uh, it looked to me as a very, very poor country, and at that time I was I was coming from the Gaza Strip, so uh, not that I had uh, as a comparison uh, uh, mm -hmm. a, a, a more ideal situation and uh, my experience at that time uh, while i was working and setting up this uh, this platform for local governance in libya in times where local governance was not there centralization was everywhere and decentralization was only on paper uh, mm -hmm. it was quite of, uh, 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 of an awkward situation. I mean, I couldn't really communicate with the, with the Libyans. They were very much closed up. Uh, they mm. seemed to me like uh, zombies. I mean, I mean, there was no interaction when I was proposing. There was no uh, initiative, no intervention, no critical thinking whatsoever. So I said to myself, I never again will work in this country. I mean, this is my first and last time. Um, but never say never, as we say. And uh, in 2008, I went back to Libya after having worked with Iraq. And uh, the experience uh, uh, with Iraq has taught me to go beyond the evidences uh, and to dig deeper, deeper to find wealth. So I used a different approach at that time. It was still Gaddafi era. Uh, it was still very close. Uh, uh, at that time, uh, uh, there was not uh, um, yet signed the friendship agreement between Italy and Libya. Uh, so there was some sensitivity uh, towards uh, the relationship. And I came as a woman and uh, uh, with with uh, with strange approach to them, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and this was quite uh, uh, quite a learning process. Uh, um, I decided to uh, apply the same approach I was applying with the Iraqi, where the society is very much uh, uh, more more complex than the Libyan one, and there I discovered the Libyan people. And this was uh, uh, love for life. Uh, these people are uh, incredibly eager to learn, incredibly humble. Uh, they, among the Arabs, they were the only ones who really recognized uh, their limits, who really said, we don't know, uh, please help. And this is incredible when you have this uh, um, uh, mental uh, opening, this availability uh, towards uh, the others, uh, uh, despite uh, a closed system uh, which has uh, destroyed uh, an entire society for 42 years. Uh, it, has, uh, it has dismantled uh, the education system in 42 years. Uh, not to forget the Benghazi University in the, 70s, in the 70s was one of the best universities together with Baghdad in the Middle East. 
uh, all this richness has been completely uh, destructured uh, by uh, by Gaddafi and his uh, and his order. Uh, but uh, then I discovered that uh, you know there was fire under uh, under the ashes. And it was a wonderful discovery because it was gradual and they opened up gradually. We did so many things during that period, which was quite difficult because we couldn't move, nobody could talk. It was very difficult to start up a participatory process because actors were kept distant, mistrust was uh, planted in Libyan society because by the divide tempera, uh, tempera uh, Gaddafi was able to control uh, uh, the country and, and to also uh, um, dismantle the, the political power of the tribe was coming from a small tribe compared to others uh, but he was genius he was a genius in, in the sense that he he, he, he opened up uh, the country to everybody so the tribes uh, were free to move wherever to 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 install and live wherever they wanted so if you see Libya uh, from from far, from the outer space, you would see uh, like a, a spider web because then you have this relationship uh, between the families, among the families, which link as with west, south, with north in, in an incredible manner. So modern uh, a tribal country, Libya has become, uh, during Gaddafi, a geographic communities-based country uh, where you have villages in the north, villages in the east, villages in the south, which are linked by uh, uh, tribal relationships. Uh, and, and I mean, all this uh, richness uh, and the fact that uh, this, uh, this territoriality, uh, which was very strong in Libyan perception, uh, could have made the unity of the country if we had worked on it uh, properly. Uh, when the revolution uh, started, I was there. I was there and I was in charge uh, before uh, before the revolution started, when all the uh, so-called Arab Springs, I don't like to call them Arab Springs, but uh, mm -hmm. after what happened in Egypt, in Tunisia, especially what happened in Tunisia, I started noticing uh, that in Libya were happening things uh, that I've never seen before. People were starting claiming, they were starting mm -hmm. asking uh, for rights. And I remember once Gaddafi uh, had this uh, uh, broadcast uh, uh, intervention on television and said, you are uh, complaining why I'm not distributing the, 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 the popular houses. Uh, but uh, in Libya, there is no private property, property. Anything is yours. So go and take what you want. You should have seen what happened that day. Everybody went and occupied houses, lands. Uh, uh, it was very difficult to control. It was overwhelmed by the reaction of the people and the police couldn't do anything because it was the leader who told people to go and get what they wanted because it was uh, uh, public uh, property. Uh, these were signs uh, that, that were preparing what was happening later on. And I remember discussing with the diplomatic community, the Russian ambassador also, and the American ambassador were, were, were there. And they were all arguing which country would have been next to Tunisia and Egypt. And everybody was expecting Algeria to be. But I said, no, look what is happening around. I'm afraid that Libya can be the next. And everybody said, uh, uh, no, Libya impossible. I mean, the people never, ever will uh, uh, revolt against uh, Gaddafi. They are, mm -hmm. they are too scared. And in fact, this was what my colleagues were saying. They, in fact, we are too scared to revolt because I was asking what was going on uh, in Benghazi uh, the day, the 15th of February, of February, there was a, a demonstration 
going on in Benghazi and everybody was worried about the outcomes of these demonstrations. Um, when I when I hear people saying that the Libyan revolution was manipulated by international powers, uh, I, I, I have to say that the Libyan people have given the international power a great opportunity, uh, a great opportunities to get rid of Gaddafi. This is yes. But uh, the revolt has been absolutely genuine because uh, I've seen Tripoli in three days uh, turning into hell from nothing. And uh, if it was expected in Cyrenaica, because there was always tension between uh, the political power in Tripoli and Cyrenaica, uh, nobody would have, would have expected that violence in Tripoli. So uh, I would say yes, there were powers behind afterwards. When they saw that the Libyan people revolted, they jumped on this uh, incredible horse to get rid of a very un uh, uh, an uncomfortable leader because Gaddafi was blackmailing uh, most of the European leaders and beyond. Uh, but Berlusconi who was in a honeymoon with Gaddafi at that time. Um, but uh, but I have to say, and this is uh, I'm I'm I witnessed the revolution, uh, and I have to say when there was the a NATO bombing, uh, uh, when the NATO started bombing, uh, and the nights the bombs uh, uh, they stopped bombing the the, the cities or uh, or the sites where they had to bomb. I remember the women uh, in Tripoli, there was a kind of a code to communicate with, with, with mm -hmm. one and another. And they were saying, ah, uh, the mother didn't bring the milk today. Because everybody oh. was incredibly relying on, on this to get rid of, uh, of, uh, of Gaddafi. And at that time, I worked a lot with the Libyan diaspora. The, the Libyan diaspora persecuted by 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 the regime people i was about to forbid. ask uh, benedetta sorry to interrupt i was about to ask uh, so what was your role at the time exactly what were you doing yeah. in libya in libya uh, i was uh, uh, i mean during Gaddafi, i was uh, in charge of uh, uh, the uh, social response uh, social uh, uh, um, responsibility programs uh, at any north africa so mm -hmm. i was Seeing the cooperation uh, from uh, from the uh, private sector, uh, from the uh, devil point of view, what, uh, what I thought it was the devil mm -hmm. point of view, but it was very interesting because we managed to do so many things at the time, and uh, and uh, this has exposed me to um, a multiplicity of actors in Libya. Then after the revolution, all these people that I knew who were uh, dean of universities, who were uh, president of local councils, et cetera, et cetera, became uh, ministries, uh, uh, mayors, uh, local councillors. Uh, so I found myself uh, in the position, uh, in a very uh, incredible position of having the possibility of uh, uh, influencing uh, somehow, helping somehow uh, an historical moment of the country. Because uh, for mm -hmm. us who, who work in international cooperation, we always have to be satisfied with drops in the sea. And, and sometimes we see results, but we don't see impact. Uh, mm -hmm. So this was a turning point for me professionally and personally. Personally, because I lost friends during the revolution uh, and their blood uh, is to me uh, the flag of whatever I'm doing for this country until today uh, and professionally because uh, uh, it gave me the uh, rare opportunity uh, to uh, help in an historical moment of, uh, of a country. So what went wrong uh, after mm -hmm. this incredible moment? Uh, and I recall uh, the first uh, political election because, of course, uh, we international community we were very ready to get rid of Gaddafi, but totally unprepared uh, to guide this transition. Totally unprepared and totally mm -hmm. ignorant about Libya because Libya was totally isolated. Everybody knew Libya because of Gaddafi. Nobody knew Libyans. Uh? And the mayor of Tripoli tells me often, Benedetta, everybody's talking about Libya, nobody talks about Libyans. 
So that's why I have, I have accept, uh, accepted this invitation tonight because I want to talk about Libyans. Mm -hmm. So when we start, uh, we start things, uh, I mean, uh, the democracy for us is election. Election is fine. It's a fine exercise if it's not driven by popular con uh, consensus, if it's driven by mm -hmm. politics. And in a society like the Libyan, where uh, the, the political culture was not there, I mean, people were not used to practice any kind of uh, uh, participation in political life, in social life. They were absolutely limited to their, to their own functions in their own family. Uh, so it's very difficult to ask these people to understand the complexity of uh, these processes. And I remember once uh, they called me from from Zawiya, uh, from the University of Zawiya, um, uh, and they said, Benedetta, please come and help us in setting up for political parties. I said, oh, I'm not an expert in setting up political parties. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a process, this needs uh, lots of uh, thinking, you know? But uh, I told them you have a unique opportunity to do things your own way because uh, you have a, 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 a blank sheet. You can write whatever you want. You are at point zero, so you can start everything according to your specificities. Uh, and uh, and the guy looked at looked at me and said, uh, "If we only knew where zero is." And this, for me, was a starting point. This, for me, was uh, mm -hmm. uh, how we have to approach a country uh, with an understanding of what is our culture, huh? uh, critical thinking, participation, political life, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and web, uh, among people who, who don't know what this is about, and who look at you as you were, uh, you know, bearing the magic stick. Um, so uh, I think uh, we were irresponsible uh, in in so many ways uh, because um, uh, we started building a house from the roof instead of the roots because we are in a hurry uh, and the hurry is dictated by our needs, not by the needs of the people we should help. So I think we have to stop lying and look at ourselves, so the way we do things, not what we do, but how we do it. Uh, to have uh, uh, respect, uh, uh, not to talk about impact, but have respect, respect. for differences and culture. So well, but and one of the first questions we were yeah. asking is uh, how to work amidst conflict and instability. So of course, a vulnerable situation means that you can't just operate like you normally would. So this is something to keep in mind as well. Yes, but uh, you know, uh we, we 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 unless we are dead okay life goes on it's not that because there is instability people are on hold waiting for stability there was this mm -hmm. instrument for stabilization instituted by the european commission for libya uh, and once things went wrong in 2014 uh, the, the first thing they suspended the program. I mean, why waiting for stability to work on stabilization? This is, I mean, we have really uh, to think about it. We have to learn how to balance uh, our security with our productivity. Because if we don't feel secure and we are not productive, uh, never mind, you stay at home. You don't have to spend a million of euros uh, uh, sitting in Tunis uh, uh, managing Libya. Uh, but if you are running, doing something that uh, you, we know that we run some risks uh, and should be calculated risk, but we don't have to stop. We have to be there when people mostly need us, not when people are uh, nice and comfortable and can help us as well. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, this is really, when, when, uh, when the revolution finished uh, in 2012, the first thing that should have been done in Libya was disarmament, was disarming the militias. And it was a perfect moment because you should see the Libyans after the revolution. They were celebrating all over. They were throwing, uh, uh, you know, uh, sweets uh, uh, mm -hmm. all over the 
places. They were so happy. I've never seen Libyans smiling like I did after the revolution. Right. Um, so this is, I mean, I witnessed this. It's not, you know, uh, just for saying it. I've seen these people. You know, the day of the election, there was 50 degrees. I was there. I had also my my black uh, finger uh, because they said you should uh, also have your your mark of this first historical election and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it was so hot and they were queuing like uh, like in in britain they were queuing waiting for their moment and then when they entered and they and they uh, and they voted uh, they were so happy and celebration and then i remember i went in this courtyard in a, in a school and there were these two old men sitting on the soil uh, trying to rest on a little bit of shadow and i looked at them and they said and they, they looked at me and they said Ah, oh, my daughter, today we can die. It's incredible. It's so mm. powerful. So it's not that Libyans uh, didn't know how important was that moment. It, it, it was how, how the illusion of that moment that was not clear. Huh? Nobody told them that the election is not the solution of all the problems they have inherited mm -hmm. and the problems we have exported to them. Huh? Because mm -hmm. they have they had problems inherited by the past regime, of course, uh, uh, internal divisions, uh, 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 tensions among communities. That's why it has been an incredible mistake to uh, uh, to keep the militias on the payroll of the transitional council and then assign the militias to their uh, towns to their territories, which means when you had the tensions between, for instance, two, two uh, nearby territories like the Warshatana and Zawiya, uh, before they were arguing, like uh, beating each other, and then they found themselves with rockets and uh, heavy, heavy weapons and they start shooting. I was there. Mm -hmm. I was there in the night, heavy shooting, and in the morning we were talking all together around the table strategic planning. This is the absurdity of where everybody found uh, uh, her himself. And when, uh, when uh, um, wh what I wanted to say, it's, it, it, it was very important at that time. The only good thing that has, to, uh, that, that, has, that, uh, that has been done at that time were the municipal elections. Because the transitional council has seen immediately they couldn't control the country as Gaddafi did previously. Impossible. So they found the country like uh, divided into little pieces, uh, each one claiming uh, it's part of, uh, of, the, of the cake, which, which was normal. Huh? Um, mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, they decided uh, with this, uh, with uh, at that time the parliament and, uh, and this law fifty nine, they decided to have uh, municipal election. And was the best thing w w uh, that ever happened to Libya. Why? Because uh, 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 the election were done on an individual basis, so people went home by home to uh, ask the most. Uh, you know, respect for people they knew, please help us. You, uh, we will, would like to elect you. Um, so it was like a family issue, this election, uh, the, the municipal elections. And the, and the mayors and the local councillors uh, were the family, really the family. They were uh, responsible, uh, the fathers uh, of all the problems uh, and all the solutions. And these people have found themselves running a crisis every day, incredible crisis, under unimaginable, uh, unimaginable conditions, with no budgets, with their own money. They run the administration with their own money or with friends, uh, borrowing money from, uh, from local entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, what they have done, they were like uh, their offices, uh, some of their offices, they were in, uh, in old prisons. I remember when I took them to, 
to Belgium and we went to see the mayor of Mechelen, uh, who's a wonderful man and now is the minister at the, at the Flemish government. Uh, and this mayor was sitting in, in a wonderful office, really historical, mm -hmm. beautiful. Huh? Uh, and, uh, and, and the mayor of Zintan, he, he, he told him, I mean, I'm sitting in an old prison, but I try to be like you. I mean, I try mm -hmm. to adopt the same approach you do. So it's incredible to see this humanity and, and it's incredible to see the courage and the dedication of these people. That's why I, <clears throat> in, in, uh, in 2015, when uh, incredibly uh, and always the international community decided to close everything on Libya to push uh, the Libyans uh, in signing the political mm -hmm. agreement, uh, these people had no voice. They were not invited in any table. They were invited only at tables when they needed, the, they, they were asked to, uh, you know, endorse uh, mm -hmm. um, agreements. Mm -hmm. and, I'm wondering and so that that what What's the situation like today, if you can do a, a jump of a few years? Like, they yes. went from the struggles to, like, how did it evolve? Uh, it evolved uh, in, uh, uh, I mean, if you see it from our side uh, and uh, through uh, the media, uh, it's, it's terrible, huh? because you, you see trapped people between uh, uh, conflict, pandemia uh, it's it's uh, and and a difficult life uh, if you imagine that in tripoli and in the west they have blackouts of 12 hours and the heat goes up already 40 42 degree uh, oh. and the winter was very cold with no electricity if you see that uh, these people who were under the bombs uh, uh, every day with no electricity, no water, uh, you wonder how. I mean, uh, they, 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 they cannot survive. But I can tell you that these people, despite the situation, the mayors of those cities, they were at night and day in their office. They, they had set up uh, uh, instructions, procedures for the, for the COVID-19. Uh, they were the first to issue uh, uh, procedures and instructions for the uh, for the citizens how to face uh, um, how to organize social distances and and personal uh, uh, protection. Uh, I mean, uh, these people are heroes. Are not just public servants. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not saying that they are all. Uh, good and they are all wonderful huh? uh, they have their own contradictions so they have uh, uh, lots of uh, problems influences uh, there is lots of corruptions as well but the situation is the most important thing is that we need to work uh, um, uh, to create space for these communities and these municipalities to work together around uh, common interests because this brings people together. This builds peace, peace around uh, uh, pragmatism, eh? because the utopia must be pragmatic, otherwise it stays a dream. So we, we need uh, as uh, uh, international donors or uh, partners, because I don't like this, uh, uh, this donor uh, uh, mm -hmm. definition, uh, as partners, we should uh, we should really support the efforts of this uh, of this uh, local administration, helping them in becoming better, in having better instruments to improve uh, services to their citizens, and especially not create competition among them, giving only to the ones who want to uh, the ones who are under the general the the, the government of national accord because it's internationally recognized and leaving the rest outside because they uh, follow under another administration so uh, we, we we need to be uh, objective we need to be neutral we need to identify those uh, things uh, those items those interests 
that brings people together. And uh, uh, we have a practical example, Irene, here, uh, and I'm mm -hmm. very glad that uh, uh, you agreed to show this uh, video of a, a partnership started between uh, five Libyan municipalities and uh, region Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, over uh, the fishing sector. Uh, I think this is uh, an example of how, despite conflict, despite uh, uh, all sorts of harms, uh, uh, we can still build and build uh, across the Mediterranean because our interests are their interests and vice versa. Uh, this is very important because once people uh, see the necessity of coexisting, not tolerating each other. I don't like tolerance, the word tolerance. People have to understand uh, and learn their differences to coexist and get the best out of what any one of the others can bring. Mm, absolutely. So I'll be very happy to show the video. I just wanted to let you know, Benedetta, that we have a question from Antonella. Uh, she says, hello, Irene and Benedetta, so good to be with you. Benedetta Alda is working in Tunisia and in Algeria in the region. How do you see the potential of regional cooperation, since you were just talking about uh, cooperation as well? I don't know if you want to yeah, say a couple yeah. of words on this before we show the, the video. Yes. Yes, definitely, definitely. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm an old uh, uh, fan of uh, uh, regionalizing the local level. Uh, we need to put uh, uh, regions, uh, municipalities in connection. Uh, I mean, the national level is fine. I'm not saying that we are in, uh, in competition here. Uh, states and communities are made of different layers. But I think we need to find uh, a, a way for these countries, so which are wonderful. I have set up local governance platform in Morocco, Algeria, uh, mm. Tunisia, Libya. And uh, when I was doing this, uh, I remember we have done a gathering of those uh, local authorities in Firenze. Uh, and it was wonderful. Even Algeria and Morocco that were arguing the, uh, across the uh, Western Sahara issue, uh, they were sitting together trying uh, to find a way uh, uh, to escape this problem and concentrate on other things. I think that uh, proximity to problems and citizens uh, is the one thing that makes local governance uh, um, a, a, a winning horse to bet on. Uh, because uh, uh, the other thing is uh, accountability. Accountability is uh, uh, fundamental. You cannot uh, make mistakes without being accountable. If you are not just, if there is no justice, there is no peace. We have to be accountable. And international community, international cooperation is never accountable. If you find a responsible for the mess, uh, which is now in Libya, many, many, many responsible, uh, and also internal uh, issues uh, that uh, if have stayed internal, maybe had find a solution. But if you, if you ask uh, why this mess, who's responsible? Let's find someone accountable. Nobody is accountable. And you know, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I, I said, the mayor of Tripoli uh, sent me uh, via Viber a message, a very sad message. He said, uh, what the hell? Why people uh, is not looking at us? Huh? Why they're not doing anything for us? Uh, and I said, uh, you know, I didn't have an answer for that. Uh, the only thing I, I said, please accept my apology on behalf of whomever will never give you an apology and please give this apology to whomever you know because at least this, you have to have an apology for someone from someone so we need to foster this regional cooperation among the countries beyond the, the, the central level, because the central level is still very much poisoned uh, in, in the Arab world, in the region. I mean, uh, it's not clear. The relationship are not clear. We are liars. We base we, our policies on lies. And, when you uh, and say we, is, you mean like everybody, anybody who's... Wherever you, everybody look, <laughs> wherever you look, wherever you look, the world uh, 
uh, even when they talk about human rights, these talks are hypocrisy, is lying, is lying. Mm -hmm. And this re re repetition of lies, uh, it's, it's part of the real politics. Okay, the real politic doesn't care about the citizens, doesn't care about the people. But the local governance level, if uh, you uh, set an organized mechanism to trace accountability, it's much more visible what they do. And they are uh, keen to uh, produce to be reelected. It's not that, uh, you know, they, they, they only jump on consensus uh, for empty uh, idiocies, uh, but they have to produce to be reelected. So, yes, we have to work. That there is enormous space for that. And I know that uh, lo uh, localities uh, are very happy, local, uh, local administrations are very happy to work on this dimension. In the Moroccans, when we started this uh, Nicosia initiative, which is the initiative we started with Libyan municipality and European Committee of the Regions in 2016, which was the only, only solely uh, European entity uh, which has allowed the little cooperation with Libya and with the municipalities. We had this little window to show the world the Libyans. And thanks mm -hmm. to the Committee of the Region for that. Uh, in, in this uh, uh, assembly, they have this uh, uh, Mediterranean Assembly for Regional and Local Authorities. Uh, um, it was incredible the reaction of uh, the Moroccans to the Palestinians uh, who are sitting in the same assembly. And for the first time, also the Libyans are sitting in the same assembly. And the Moroccans have helped the Libyans a lot in organizing the statutes of uh, a future union of municipalities. So there is much to, to share. Also with Tunisia, mm -hmm. the same, with Tunisia, the same thing, the mayor of Almarsa, the mayor of uh, Tunis, the mayor of Nabal, uh, they, 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 they told me we are ready. I, the mayor of Marsa told me if you need a space, come and sit in our municipality. So this is wow. what we have to do. The mayor of Ramallah, the same. We need to create more space for this to happen as it happens in Europe through ALDA. We really need, might, might need the ALDA at the, at, the, at, the, at the regional level, which means not competing with the national level, but uh, mm -hmm. integrating uh, this uh, uh, real politic with a more realistic uh, uh, life-oriented politics. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So we'll You're we'll welcome. go show the video then. And Thank if you. anybody wants to ask something, uh, you can comment um, under the video, and we will answer later. And then I think it will be a wrap. Thank you very much. Since 2015, the European Committee of Regions has developed important political relations with the Libyan municipalities. Through Libyan's Julia Autonomous Region was the first Italian region to join the so-called Nicosia Initiative, a bottom-up approach for the reconstruction of the Libyan territory, which started from the local authorities and ranged along different policy areas, including the fishery sector. There's a two-fold objective to improve the economic conditions in Libya and to give support to public administration in joining the international community. In 2018, thanks to a funding opportunity of the Italian Ministry of the Interior, Free Libyan and Julia region continued on this path with the project Path Def, pilot action in the fishery sector for Libyan economic development. Attraverso questo progetto che è stato cofinanziato dal Ministero degli Interni ha voluto cercare di attivare una filiera del pesce, del prodotto ittico che dalla Libia possa arrivare ecco, in Fluenza Giulia e attraverso il Fluenza Giulia entrare in Unione Europea. Thanks to specific training activities in Italy, experts and technical operators had the opportunity to update data information on Libyan material and immaterial assets in the fishery sector, to see the best practices in Friuli Venezia Giulia, and to understand norms and laws 
regulating fishing activities, its transformation and marketing. كان العمل الأساسي خلال السنة الماضية تجميع البيانات والمعلومات والوضع الحالي للبنية التحتية وما صائد الأسماك في ليبيا لتكوين صورة حقيقية وواضحة يمكن على أساسها بناء والاستمرار في المشروع ودعم هذا القطاع الحيوي لتوفير مصدر دخل بديل للشعب الليبي خصوصا بعد المعاناة التي عاناها خلال الحرب في سنة 2011 اشتغلنا خلال السنة الماضية على عدة اتجاهات أنا كنت من ضمن المجموعة اللي مسؤولة على موضوع منح تجهيز ليبيا في الأخذ أو الحصول على الرقم الخاص بالتصدير للمجموعة الأوروبية وقد حضرنا دورة تدريبية في هذا الموضوع والذي شمل تعريفنا بالإجراءات اللي يجب أن نتخذها طبعا اتضح لنا من خلال هذا البرنامج أن ليبيا فيما, فيما يخص التشريعات التي لها علاقة بسلامة الأسماك أن توجد في ليبيا العديد من التشريعات وهي بصفة أنا كرئيس اللجنة المختصة بإصدار المواصفات ضمن المركز الوطني للمعايير والمواصفات القياسية بأن تشريعاتنا تكاد تكون مواءمة جدا لتشريعات الاتحاد الأوروبي. In less than 12 months, four training activities were organized in Friuli Venezia Giulia that involved more than 50 representatives from the coastal municipalities of Tripoli, Benghazi, Tobruk, and Gulf of Sirte. An important working group with more than 24 training days and 11 visits to relevant flagship practices of Friuli Venezia Giulia region. One of the scope principal of this initiative is called the Matchmatch, which means mettere insieme delle realtà simili, le amministrazioni del sud con le amministrazioni in questo caso europee e in questo caso si è sviluppata questa collaborazione rispetto al settore della pesca. Natamanna i confitti a un mabin al baladiata o il mukhatat l'Italia o il baladiata in Libia o a un mabin al rijal d'amal in Libia o in Italia l'enna tarwa samakia in Libia mazzar attisadi kbir jidden سواء كان لليبيا أو لشريك الإيطالي من الاستفادة منها وتفعيلها في أقرب وقت خدمة للشعب نستفيد من خبرات الصيادين في منطقة فريدي ويعني نحاول توظيف عدد من الشباب والرقي بهذا القطاع إلى أفضل أفضل وشكرا Sure. So exactly as you said, yeah. it was all about partnerships and and being realistic, um, but you know, still dreaming. You know, I mean, uh, sometimes uh, when when uh, when uh, I first proposed uh, uh, this action uh, under uh, uh, conditions of uh, perpetrated conflict in Libya, everybody was looking at me as I was uh, completely full. Huh? Uh, but then, uh, you know, if you if you uh, declinate uh, the steps uh, in a reasonable way, uh, 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 everything becomes possible. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, we found uh, uh, in the Friuli Venezia Giulia a, re a real pioneer. But, but why? Because uh, the fish uh, cooperatives of Friuli Venezia Giulia are into a deep crisis uh, because of lack of fish. Uh, in the in the sea, and uh, when they when they met, uh, uh, and they were also uh, very well aware of Libya because in 2005, Gaddafi wanted starting uh, the uh, developing this sector, uh, and I asked uh, some uh, experts from Italy to understand uh, the potential of the Libyan Sea in terms of fishing, and uh, some of those. 
fishermen we met uh, whom we met in Friuli Venezia Giulia knew Libya very well and the coast of Libya so they knew what's in there uh, and it's incredible what's in there so this this mix of interests uh, it, it wasn't just uh, I mean uh, uh, the, the 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 country Italy helping uh, the poor Libyans uh, developing uh, this is a rhetoric mm. we should completely forget we don't have to turn people into assistees we have to to help people to grow as partners because it's partners that we need to live in this world. It's not that, uh, you know, the COVID uh, emergency has taught us something, I hope at least it has taught us something, that nobody, no, no, nobody can survive alone because mm -hmm. this, uh, this disease has condemned us uh, to solitude. It's incredible what we have experienced, and we have experienced that freedom is not a given fact. It's not because you have a passport that you are free. We are so lucky, and we forget that there are people in COVID conditions since they, they, they since years. Uh, because of their political system. We should be less selfish. We should really look into opportunities. Development starts not from what we lack, but from what we have. So we have to also push people identifying uh, not just their problems. Uh, they have to identify what they have, what, what, what they have in mind in terms of solutions, because uh, we can discover wonders. I've discovered with this fishery, I've discovered capacities in Libya I didn't know were existing. I mean, and cluster, uh, uh, Experience, all the experience in fishing and navigate. It's it's incredible what's in there in terms of capacity to develop, and it's a strategic also sector because we cannot do the little things, uh, a generator here, an ambulance there, etc., etc. This is not this is not, not Libya at all. But this is not uh, what development uh, development means. We have to give people dignity. We have to pay people respect and we have to listen and learn because we always have something to learn. And when we have something to learn, then we might have something to exchange. And it's incredible. It's so fruitful. You know, this video, this, the date of this video is very important. We were 50 people in Udine uh, and Trieste the 3rd of April last year. The 4th of April after uh, as attacked uh, uh, Tripoli. And I was with mm -hmm. them, with the mayor of Tripoli and the mayor of Benghazi. Every, everybody, the same desperation. Everybody, the same shock. It's not because the Benghazi was with after and Tripoli was with the other ones. Uh, you know, the, the, the Libyan, uh, I, I, I try to do something now. Uh, um, the Libyan war as it is today is made of three layers it's like a cake mm -hmm. huh? first layer is uh, libyan libyan is about distribution distribution of wealth mm -hmm. and power this has been the problem the uh, the heritage left by gaddafi because gaddafi has concentrated the political power in west Libya because uh, their resources, economic resources, were mostly in the east. So to balance, uh, especially his authority, uh, he concentrated the political power in the west and have the east only producing without enjoying uh, the wealth. So and the south, not to talk about the south, even worse. So mm -hmm. this distribution issue is a Libyan distribution, and this has been the core of the Libyan conflict after the uh, uh, 12, uh, uh, 2011 revolution, okay? Then, then you have the second layer. The second layer is ideology. We are with Muslim Brotherhood or we are for a secular state. This is the second layer where the conflict starts. Libya has never been a radical uh, Islamic country. Huh? Muslim country, yes. Political Islam, no, never. I remember the day of the election, this lady was all the gloves and all uh, dressed in black. I asked her, 
for, for whom you voted. And he said uh, Mahmoud Jibril was leading uh, the alliance of the secular parties. And I said, uh, why you didn't vote for the Muslim brother? Uh, brotherhood and, it, uh, and she said i don't need uh, i don't need more islam in my country i need more development this was mm -hmm. she said this is what she said to me and this is what she, what uh, most of the libyans say so uh, there is unfortunately the second layer with the with the political islam and because we left libya alone so we had isis coming into libya and all this uh, um, uh, Muslim bro Brotherhood uh, uh, strategy to control the Middle East, uh, imbalancing uh, Iran, uh, which is led by uh, Turkey, uh, mm -hmm. uh, because Saudi Arabia is undergoing uh, other issues at the moment. Uh, so this is uh, this is uh, the second layer. The third layer is about influence, and this is the proxy war. This is uh, how this country, Turkey and Qatar from one side, mm -hmm. uh, the Emirates, Egypt, uh, France, uh, and uh, you name it, Russia, uh, mainly Russia. Uh, France uh, is a little bit complicated. I don't want to enter in this, it's too uh, complicated. But Russia, uh, the Emirates and Egypt mainly sitting on the other side. This is not about, uh, who wins. This is not about Sarraj or Hafter. This is about who control uh, the uh, economy in the uh, East Mediterranean or who stops the others to control the East of Mediterranean. So uh, now we, our uh, incapability, uh, our unpreparedness, uh, in dealing with Libyan transition since the beginning has, uh, uh, has led us in turning Libya from a player into a playground. Now Libya is a playground. Mm -hmm. but, but we still can work to have Libya as a player because there are so many people, you cannot imagine the kind of leadership uh, Libya can expect press from the bottom up. These people will lead Libya one day. And we are now running around powers who won't have a future in the Libya of tomorrow. So, you know, mm -hmm. we are um, uh, living uh, um, in, a, in a vulnerable world. We will have to deal with fragility every day of our life. The pandemic is one uh, is one thing that has uh, uh, taught us uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, small uh, um, uh, truth. But uh, we need to find ways uh, to create islands of stability. We cannot wait for things to settle. Things won't settle. We are the generation. I I define our generation as the, the the farmers of the winter we the need farmers of the winter mm -hmm. yes we need to go out and work without expecting nothing because we might mm -hmm. have fruit we might have not but if we don't go out and work we won't have fruit this is the certain so, it's a sort uh, of practical hope yes so, <laughs> Say, and this is very important. I mean, life goes on unless you are died, unless you are dead, life mm -hmm. goes on. People under these circumstances, under the bombs, under everything, have done Ramadan, have sat with their, with their uh, relatives, uh, have practices with social distances because of the pandemic, have, have continued their work, continued their work. Uh, two months after the conflict, uh, we were all together, these same people who were in Udine with me, we were in Spain to open up a poten uh, potential partnership with uh, Galicia about uh, fisheries. So, you know, ne nothing stops us uh, unless we are blocked here. And we have to give people chances because their fortune is our fortune. Their misfortune is our misfortune. We need to understand that this is globality, not global market only. 
globality is we don't have uh, we don't have boundaries i mean uh, the the only boundaries we have are mental because you see a little virus in a while from china has changed the world uh, uh, order uh, until today and we'll see uh, still things happen later on so we don't have to classify things without understanding we need to be educated to complexity educated to complexity means that we have to understand uh, incorporate this complexity and uh, understand and learn all its elements uh, to find the best solutions uh, which are not shortcuts shortcuts are um, just useless we don't need shortcuts we need to understand and do um uh, uh do things in a different way we don't have to be scared to say uh we were wrong it's okay to be wrong what is not we okay again. keep mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but, but keep oh, being yeah, wrong. trying wrong. to do the same thing yeah mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, Benedetta, I feel like you've, you've given us so many pills of wisdom and uh, like there is a lot of food for thought here and I know we could go on and on and on. <laughs> um, yes. I, 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 I will definitely watch this again and take notes that time because I, <laughs> I'm like, oh gosh, I want to write this down. So I, again, it's hard to stop the conversation because I know it could keep going, but I also don't want to hold yes. you for too long. Um, it was really an honor to have you with us. I don't know if you want to say just a few last words. Uh, the, 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 the honor has been mine and thanks for having given me the possibility to give voices to people who don't have voices and to put a face uh, to functions uh, uh, like mayor of Tripoli, mayor of Benghazi, people who are around, wonderful people who, who, who just want to live in peace and want to share what they have. So I think, I mean, uh, to encourage everybody not to stop when things get worse, but when things, uh, things get worse, we should be more active because it's worth it at the end. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much, Benedetta. Thanks everybody Thank for you. watching. Have a good evening.